we created this Israel Speaker Series years ago because we believe that uh, getting educating college students is too little and too late, and that we need to start it in the high schools. So we began by bringing in speakers to high schools, literally bringing them in. But because of this pandemic, it's given us the opportunity to go to webinars, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, this series is named after Gary Shapiro, who is a friend, was a friend and uh, left us way too early, especially to the Jewish community. Gary was a rabbi, a chazan, a brilliant musician, and a comedian. He performed with Robin Williams, and most of all, he was an educator. Gary loved this program, and he would be overjoyed today to see what's happening, and especially in his name. And may the Shapiro family be blessed with good health and happiness for everything that they're doing. So Bill, thank you very much for moderating this. Uh, the, the students are wonderful. And last thing I will say, although this is for uh, everybody to watch, it's primarily for students to ask questions. So please, only if you're a student, say your name, the school that you're coming from, and ask your question. Thank you, Bill, and we look forward. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I appreciate that introduction. I um, have known Jack by telephone or by email for quite a while, and when he told me that he was organizing programs for high school students, I thought that was such a fantastic idea because nobody else was really doing that. And I think he was really ahead of the curve because the issue now is preparing high school students for what they can expect on campuses, on college campuses. There's been all the attention goes to the college campuses, but not enough to the students who are still in high school. And a lot of the problems that we've seen on college campuses, we're now seeing in high schools and even elementary schools. I'm not gonna speak very long because this is really your chance to hear from some students, several students, who are on college campuses, and they know probably better than I do what is going on. But just to put things in perspective, I started following and dealing with these anti-Israel issues in the early 1980s at Harvard Law School. And there's a lot of lessons, so I've watched this over a 30-year period and how it's developed. At that time, you were seeing the seeds of what students now face on college campuses. The anti-Israel activist groups, and they were very small, nothing like today, were trying to form alliances based on race and other identities against Israel. They were outliers at that time, but one thing that was very interesting, if you look at the students from the Harvard Jewish Law Students Association uh, versus the people who were anti-Israel, most of us, if not all of us, went into business and law firms. Uh, I joined academia, but only relatively recently. If you look at the anti-Israel students, many, if not most of them, went into academia. And they spent 30 years teaching college students to hate Israel and act agitating against Israel. And some of the biggest names uh, were my, college, my law school classmates in the anti-Israel movement on campuses. And so what things have developed is now when you're going to college, you're going to face a much more complicated and much more difficult situation than students faced even 10 or 15 years ago, because these coalitions against Israel have been developed. It's now part of the ideology, so-called intersectionality. And I'm sure the various students who are going to speak today are going to speak about that. And some of the questions we'll have at the end will be, how do you address that when you get to campuses? Uh, one other thing before I turn it over to our first student speaker is please keep things in perspective. The situation at some colleges can be quite bad, but it's relatively small number of colleges. Now, they are the colleges and universities that we are used to hearing about. They're the ones who are in the news, the Columbia Universities, University of Michigan, UCLA. But if you add them all up, they are two to three, two to four dozen colleges out of multiple thousands around the country. 
but they are the ones who importantly develop the leaders of the future, the people who go in to work for the New York Times and other places. So please keep it in perspective. This could happen to you at a campus, but it won't necessarily. And also, believe it or not, polling consistently shows the American people overwhelmingly, regardless of party, support Israel. So know that you are not alone. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker, um, who is Rebecca, and I will do a very short introduction and let her speak. Uh, Rebecca Mann is a senior at Kennesaw State University and is a business management major. She's also a volleyball coach. She's the president and founder of Students Supporting Israel at KSU. Hi, hey everyone. Very excited to be here. Um, so thank you. Um, yes, as I said, I am the president of Student Supporting Israel in Ken at Kennesaw. Um, I, my campus is more um, apathetic. Uh, their students kind of just stay in their own lane. It's a big school, but it's also a commuter school. Um, I can share with you. I have, a, I have a lot of things I could share with you. Um, I could share about our coalition building um, for sure. So. Let's see, so a big thing on campus is how do you get students to care about Israel? Um, and it's a, hard, it's a hard topic when they just are not interested. And so something that I really uh, thrive on and really try my best to is to build coalitions, to build bonds and connections with other, um, with other students and with other clubs. Uh, just like Professor was just, speaking about intersectionality and how the anti-Israel groups will um, partner up with the minority groups or, or just different groups, that is something that I see value in. Uh, just like we're the, uh, the Jewish people are a minority group, I would like to partner with other groups on campus so that we can uh, do things together and find commonality. So this could range from you know being a student in a classroom Maybe you're in a history class and just trying to throw Israel in wherever you can, or maybe it's a technology. Um, maybe you talk about ways, uh, or maybe you talk about SodaStream, which is a amazing, an amazing company based in Israel where they bring Jews and Arabs together. Um, and a lot of students, and we, ta we table a lot on our campus, and it's called tabling, our generation a lot of times puts uh, nouns and makes it verbs. So tabling is literally just sitting at a table and advertising and communicating. So um, I can give you a list of different events that we have done to bridge those gaps. We've had um, an amazing event called Falafel Fiesta. And so we partnered with a Latina sorority and um, a Latin club called Olas and partnered with Hillel the Jewish group on campus, and we um, had an amazing event where we brought a couple of Latin Jews to share their story on immigration to Israel, Brazil, Panama. Um, we we had other events. Uh, we had a, something called Intro to Coalition Parliament, and we actually partnered with Turning Point USA, the Young Democrats, the College Republicans, um, and even and the Libertarians as well. And so we had an event where we had someone speak on Israel's democracy and um, how it's only democracy in the Middle East. And the way that I got the all the different students is from built connections. Um, you never know when you can connect with someone about Israel and that turned into an event. Um, we also wanted to partner with uh, the Her Campus is a women's group and NCNW, a black American women's group. And we were gonna uh, have International Women's Day um, and do a Krav Maga event. Unfortunately, it had to get canceled because of COVID, but there are just so many. We had an MLK Jr. and Zionism event that we, that we came together. So the point is, is that even when you're in, you know, your high school students, even when you're in class, you can start these conversations early. You can bring Israel into your conversation. Um, and before the anti-Israel group gets there and before that they come and try to make connections, we can do that. We, we're, we're fully capable and we can get prepared to do that. So that's a little bit of the campus, how our campus functions um, these days.
I'll have some questions, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to save the questions that we have for all of the panelists um, until the end. But since we can't all be on at any one time, I will ask one or two uh, to Rebecca, if that's okay with her. Um, have you ever experienced anti-Semitism on campus, and how did you respond to it? Yes. Um, so last year on 9-11, we had a tabling event partnering with a couple of the political groups and it was a beautiful event put on with FSI and we had um, shaped in 9-11 and students could come and honor 9-11 and place a flag in one of the cups. Everything was going great. Um, and then uh, my board members had to leave. And so, and so some, some of the other people stayed going with us had to leave. And so there was this, so I was essentially by myself. Um, and there was this student who started approaching me and started walking up and started yelling at me and calling me a Nazi and cussing me out and Israel out over and over and told me to get out of campus. And it was, it was terrible. Um, and I just looked at her, just felt very degraded and looked at her really in disbelief and basically told her, you know, we're tabling, we're tabling for 9-11. And that's all I said. But um, that was one serious thing that happened. And it actually happened again with the same, the same student. So, um, yeah. What we'll do is we will um, now go on to the next student, um, who is Jake Kalotner. And um, he, hold on one second, is a senior taking a semester off at Yale University, so I'm going to be really interested to hear from him because I know that's been a hotbed. Um, studying archaeology and anthropology, he's been involved in various Jewish and Israel advocacy groups on campus, pr primarily AE Pi and the Yale Friends of Israel. As I've been introduced, I am Jake Ladner, um, and yeah, uh, I, I sort of got involved uh, with the Israel advocacy movement on EOS campus uh, pretty much as soon as I got here. Um, they're, they're just coming out to campus, there's already sort of an inherent like dialogue that exists about this about this conflict um, that as soon as you as soon as you enter this space, uh, you sort of have to, as a Jewish person, have to be prepared to engage with, uh, for better or for worse. Um, and here at Yale, uh, we, we, we're in a bit of an interesting situation in comparison to a lot of other Ivy League institutions um, in that, you know, in opposition to Columbia University, who just brought uh, passed a BDS resolution, or Brown University, who also just passed a BDS resolution, we haven't really had that sort of thing uh, come up, partially because of the reason, or partially because of the way that the student government here is is um, is uh, formatted, but also because of the way in which dialogue exists on campus, which is uh, somewhat limited. Um, the the way in which the way in which it has existed at Yale typically is that uh, there has never really been any sort of broad conversation about the conflict except for sort of little spurred up uh, spurred ups of like various aggression at any given point. Um, so, for example, like. Uh, when I was a first year sophomore, we really didn't have a lot of dialogue around the issues. Uh, and then when I was a junior, uh, there was a Students for Justice in Palestine chapter that was restarted here. Uh, and then that quickly started holding protests and doing the whole apartheid week thing in March uh, and pro protesting outside of the Hillel. Uh, and so for for us here, there's sort of um, the sort of this reticence uh, to engage with it at any given time because uh, I think I think from from the Jewish community in general because of this sort of fear that uh, you know 
allowing this debate to open up and allowing this debate to uh, be something that dominates the conversation will put us in a similar situation that our, our colleagues at Columbia and Brown and other Ivy League institutions have, have found themselves in which the conversation begins to get dominated by these pro-Palestinian anti-Israel groups. And so what, I, what I've been trying to do and, and over the past couple of years and what people I know have been trying to do is sort of create a space to discuss the Israel-Palestine conflict that is not one that is tied to these sort of um, these dichotomies of, of pro-Israel, anti-Israel, pro-Palestine, anti-Palestine, but rather one that, that will bring together students from both sides of the spectrum in a respectful manner to, to have these conversations about the, these really important conversations about the state of Israel um, and the, the various political issues that the state faces uh, from at home and from abroad, you know, in a respectful manner and um, in a constructive manner. And uh, I, this is this is basically what I try to do. Um, so recently, we've started up a journal here uh, at Yale called the Yale Israel Journal, where we have been publishing articles about uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict and its, reper its worldwide repercussions uh, and how it has been reflected on American college campuses or in America as a whole uh, from sort of both sides of the, spe of the spectrum. And what I sort of think about this is that we need to be changing our, the way we approach the entire conflict the, or the entire discussion instead of instead of creating these dichotomies we need to be practicing more of a sort of radical empathy in which we put ourselves in each other's shoes and try to understand each other's positions and in doing so uh create a healthy dialogue that actually instead of you know instead of having shouting matches in the street like we see so often uh actually creates possible solutions and paths forward. And so that's what I try to do here at Yale. And so I think I just have one quick question for you. Again, I don't wanna to take too much time between each speaker. Um, how um, do you see anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism overlapping, at least in your experiences at Yale? I think that the whole is anti-Zionism, anti-Semitism debate is one that is worthwhile to have, I think. For me personally, I think that that if if anti-Zionism itself is not anti-Semitism, it is certainly a pathway that encourages that sort of anti-Semitic thought um, and and allows it to proliferate. Uh, for example, back in the fall, uh, when back in the fall of last year, when this SJP group started, um, they staged a protest outside of the Hillel Building at Yale. Uh, because they were upset that the Hillel building was flying an Israeli flag. Um, and what that became was sort of a protest of, of Jewish students who were uh, entering and exiting the building, just going about their, their daily lives, getting kosher food, getting kosher meals, or going, going to uh, various uh, meetups or, or um, seminars or whatever they were doing in the Hillel building at that day because it's you know, a hub for Jewish life. And, you know, I remember that day that I was exiting the building and, and got called a baby killer by one of the students who was protesting. And so, you know, the, there was sort of this claim by that, that side, the anti-Zionist side, that, oh, this is just a, strictly a, a political opposition. But it, you can make that claim and you can argue that claim, but there's, there's absolutely no way in which you can argue that the the spaces that are created by these anti-Zionist groups are ones that are hostile to Jewish people. And so I think the solution to this is is creating these these um, spaces that sort of break that dichotomy, the 
the anti pal the, the pro Palestine pro Israel anti Palestine anti Israel dichotomy and sort of instead of instead of saying okay I'm an anti Zionist say okay I'm a person who's willing to have a conversation about these issues uh, in a manner that is constructive rather that rather than uh, creating a space that is completely deconstructive and and hostile to any sort of conversation. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go on to our next speaker, um, who is uh, Pierre um, Yona. Uh, she is president of Student Supporting Israel at UCLA. She's a fourth year psychology major focusing on developmental psychology. She was born and raised in Israel and served in the IDF spokesperson unit for two years. Her service advocating for the IDF in Israel had started the passion she has today of advocating for Israel on campus. UCLA is considered a diverse and inclusive campus with a large Jewish community. However, anti-Semitic events have happened to many students there, and I'm sure she'll be addressing her experiences. So I will now turn the floor over to Sapir. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm very lucky to go to UCLA where we really do have a very strong uh, Jewish and Israeli community. Hillel is very strong on campus and it brings together a um, few Israel and Jewish organizations. Um, so Student Supporting Israel is just one of many Israel advocacy organizations on campus. Um, I think that to begin with, my experience at UCLA might have been a a little bit different than uh, the rest of my friends here because I actually grew up in Israel and that was my first step in the American education system. Um, I am, however, used to the to be an Israel advocate after my military service because I served in the IDF spokesperson unit and this is what I was doing my whole service. Um, I believe that on the other side, we do have a very strong um, SJP students for adjusting in Palestine uh, chapter at UCLA. Um, and I think somebody already mentioned uh, the apartheid week. So they really do try to be as visible as possible on campus. Um, and of course, that includes um, the apartheid week at UCLA too. And actually this year, 2020 was the first year that we, uh, we as SSI mentioned to um, cancel this event, this, this whole week of apartheid because um, last year's it's been very violent and very extreme. Um, so we saw this as a huge success and it at least made it, I know that a few students weren't even gonna come to school during this week because they really felt uh, very threatened. Um, I believe that for students, especially for high school students who are going to go to uh, community college, it's really important to be connected to their identities and to be part of organizations that match their interests and their opinions. Um, I can say that personally for me, SSI has been a family above all, and it's been a home away from home, being that all my family lives in Israel. Um, it's been a place to meet new people that are experiencing similar things to me and similar experiences. Um, and uh, for, uh, just wanted to say something about your question from previously from about the anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, about the connections between the two. Um, I can tell that we uh, had a Purim event that we did for a program that call, that's called Watts Tutorial. It's a um, volunteering uh, program at UCLA for um, kids that are three to seven. And we went to their program. We uh, had a little Purim event. We brought them, um, we brought them candies and, um, and accessories and everything. We explained to them what was Purim and how um, like the spirit of the holiday of being happy, absolutely nothing related to Israel. And a few hours after the event was over, um, there was a huge email that was sent out to all the parents about how the organization was apologizing for us being um, pushing Israeli politics into everywhere and that they're not supporting uh, Zionism and they um, don't want to relate themselves to anything related to Israel. And they do apologize for this lack of judgment of bringing us there. Um, so I believe that, again, just the connection, the, the automatic connection between 
Judaism to Israel to making a statement about Zionism about anything is just inherently anti-Semitic. There we go. Uh, so now we will get to our final, uh, last but definitely not least, our, our final speaker, and then we'll have time for some more questions. Um, uh, her name is Svia Waranoka. I know I've mispronounced that, and I apologize for that. Um, and uh, she wasn't involved in Israel activism during high school, as she was mostly in a Jewish school system. Only in her senior year, when she was in a public school, did she see how alive anti-Semitism is and how interconnected it is to the anti-Israel sentiments. Going into her freshman year, she was a camera on-campus fellow, and now in her sophomore year, she is an ICC fellow. Uh, Svia is an honor student at John Jay College, majoring in forensic psychology. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so kind of like what I said in my bio before, like before I came to college, I wasn't really involved much in it. I didn't really think so much. I knew anti-Semitism was real, but I didn't really experience it in such a realistic firsthand thing. And then um, when I came into high school, like the first thing someone told me was literally don't tell anyone you're Jewish. And sadly, that sentiment has carried um, me through into lots of different spaces that I've been in where I don't want to tell people that I'm Jewish. And that's a very sad and scary thing. And that and that, that fear comes from because of how Israel is viewed as. Israel is viewed as this evil, like all the evil things that we think about in today's society, it is placed on Israel. And the thing is, when people think of Israel, they think of Jews. So when people talk, like things that I hear during classes are, um, Jews are all rich, we all control the world, the Holocaust wasn't that serious, why are we still talking about it? Okay, the Holocaust was serious, but why are we still talking about it? And lots of people don't even realize how all these things are so harmful and negative to Jew students. And so the biggest thing that what I do as part of the different clubs that I'm a part of is spreading these awareness, making relationships with people, and having that platform to tell people what anti-Semitism is and um, getting the word out there. And so I think as high school students going into college, you have to be aware that you need to represent yourself because no one else represents yourself and no one understands what you are going to go through and what you will feel and what your friends will go through. And so you have to go in there knowing that things can be scary, but you need to speak up for yourself, for your friends and for the Jewish people throughout the world. One question I have for you is, um, you are in more of a city sort of environment. How does that impact at all what you are experiencing? I guess city-wise, well, part of it is a commuter school. So like on one hand, people are very involved, but they're also not. So people will hear things in class and then they'll go home and that information will stay with them. And so if you don't combat things that are happening in the classroom, that information will stay with the students because they won't be necessarily so involved in other things going on. So it's so important that the education, making sure that the education that the professors are teaching isn't anti-Semitic and isn't anti-Israel because lots of things that I've noticed from professors are. And so it's dealing with those professors that have um, in fact, like um, factually incorrect um, syllabi or just are extremely anti-Semitic so dealing with those, that's things that we deal with more. Okay. Okay, we have another question. Um, how did the students learn about their history and then feel strong and confident enough to speak out about what's right and to advocate? So how did you have the confidence that perhaps others uh, with similar backgrounds don't have that confidence? I definitely relate to this, relate to this question. And in that I got to, I got to campus. Um, I am Jewish. I love Israel. And I thought, why not start a pro-Israel club? Um, and then, you know, I got involved with SSI, um, which actually I didn't mention earlier. Um, we're a clear, confident pro-Israel voice on campus. And I was so excited to be a part of this. Um, but I didn't realize how much I did not know about Israel once I was getting more involved, once I was tabling and people would come up seemingly more anti-Israel or just very skeptical. And, um, you know, I they asked me a question or they they raised an objection. I didn't know what to say. And it was honestly embarrassing. And I, you know, I learned, I grew up learning about my history, but not enough about Israel's history to really stand up. And so what I did with that frustration is I used that energy 
to to start learning and I would start I started reading um, and I started watching videos like if you've heard of Rudy Rothman he's awesome um, and uh, Charlotte Korchak who is the uh, stand with us ed senior educator and she and Rudy they really explain um, really well and and in, in, in an understandable way uh, Israeli history and current current events and all of that and so I would encourage you guys to to think you know you're not alone in this people don't know as about Israeli history, even if you grew up, grow up um, in a Jewish home, and so I would do your best. You know, go on Instagram accounts, look up YouTube YouTubers, and and there's a lot of books that can be you can read. Um, and ask people questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And I've been trying to do as much research as I can. Um, and so and so now when I'm on campus, well, right now I'm not technically on campus, but um, last semester I was able to stand up and say, hey, you know, this is actually this, this, let's t look at the history here. And, and whereas before I was just too scared to do that. And so I think knowledge is power. And by educating yourself and realizing that someone always will know more than you, but it's a process. And if you are willing to put yourself out there and you're willing to, you know, jump in an Israel club and start learning, you're ahead of people. So I would encourage you to start researching right now while, while you're in school. Thank you very much. One question, and this is for any of the students, is how um, do you find it useful? This is from one of the people watching, um, which is not who is not a student, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Do you find it useful or not to draw analogies between anti-Semitism and racial discrimination? How do you find or deal with anti-Semitism or anti-Zionism from the faculty? And I think that's an important question. Do you feel as a student that that power differential between you and a faculty member who has control over your grades is something that inhibits you? I think right now, specifically with the racial justice movements going on right now, um, it can be really helpful. You don't want to seem like you're trying to jump onto the bandwagon um, specifically, but you want to also show that there are different issues going on in racial communities. And yes, if you consider Judaism in, in, a, in a sort of white race, I was actually having a conversation with a um, department in our school and they're like, um, you're protected people, but there's different legally terms of what that can be, of what protected people that can be, that can mean religion, a race, it could be um, ethnicity and origin of place. And I was like, Judaism, we fall under all those things because we are a people before religion. We are, we are a tribal religion where we came, we had our clothing, we had our dress, we had our names that we were ourselves before we, we, we had the Torah by Mount Sinai. So we were our people before we were necessarily even this official religion. So yes, we are this race where we have our culture and you don't necessarily have religious Jews who still have this connection to Judaism. So showing that we are attacked as a people who those people won't even um, practice that faith, but they're still a attacked for something just because they're Jewish, whether they'll have a Magin David necklace or they'll say something Jewish or they even stand for Israel and they're not even Jewish, they'll be like kind of pushed as, as a Jew. So framing it as um, that we are racial issues and how people are targeting us for certain things can be helpful, but you have to frame it in a logical perspective way. Another question uh, from the audience is, um, if BDS becomes more widespread across American college campuses, would you recommend that American Jewish high school students consider college in Israel um, or attend American colleges and act as an advocate? So essentially, I think the question is, uh, what would your recommendations or your thoughts be on whether to avoid the whole US campus scene and uh, go to university in Israel or come to the U.S. campus scene and essentially fight for the rights of the Jewish people. So I will leave that up to the students to answer. So I'm going to answer this as someone who had the opportunity to go and study in Israel, but I chose to come here. Um, I would definitely not make this the basis of my choice. If you want to go to study in Israel, definitely go for it. There are amazing universities and institutes that it can be a great experience for you, but I wouldn't base my decision on whether or not there is anti, I think that given in to anti-Semitism on campuses 
would be a terrible thing for all the Jewish people eventually. And I don't think that we need to, that we can allow to prevent ourselves from going to college here. I think that it's our duty to fight anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism anti on campus. And I think that we need to make our voice heard and to pass bills in student government if um, anti-Semitism becomes more prevalent. And I think that professors and faculty need to be held accountable for anti-Semitism statements on class. Um, and I know that it might be intimidating given the fact that they are responsible for your grades. And I heard of many students that uh, experienced anti-Semitism from professors and they were scared to speak up. But I also heard about students who did exactly the opposite. Um, and I think that we need to stay here and we need to fight this. Do you ever use your appearance as looking Middle Eastern as supporting um, our belonging in the Middle East? So I'm not sure to whom that was directed, but I know it wasn't directed to me. <laughs> so I will let any of the students respond to that. I look Middle Eastern. I think people are just kind of confused by how I look. Um, I've been asked if I was Egyptian, if I was Greek. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I just look interesting. So it does help bond with people because you're just ethnically ambiguous. I'm just like, she's mine. So that does kind of help me fit. Also, I'm Hispanic. My father's side is from Chile. So like, I get to just join all these different groups, which is actually pretty awesome. I don't think I, I try and use it specifically to like enter into groups. But naturally, it's like, you know, when you're Jewish and you see another Jewish person, you're in that group automatically and people are like, hey. So it's kind of like that, where you're just people accept you more. So it can be helpful, but I wouldn't say that I use that. And I don't think I look particularly Middle Eastern. I'm not sure. There are some comments in here, but um, more than questions. Uh, so one other question that I will have for all of the students, um, I know you're all still in college, but where would you rate or how would you rate your experiences fighting for Israel in terms of the other activities that you do? Because I know for myself, when I think back to law school, almost all of my memories are from the groups who were pro-Israel and fighting the anti-Israel groups. And it really was what made the lasting memories for me. So I'd be curious whether uh, that is the same for the students who are on this panel. So yeah, for as far as memory in, in, in college, um, as I said earlier, I'm a volleyball coach. Um, I, you know, I'm a full-time student and, but SSI I would say is my life. Like I am so thankful that I knew a guy who knew a guy who was Elon, and Elon was this who is the one who started um, Students Supporting Israel in Minnesota, um, and now it's like over a hundred campuses. We're in Mexico and Argentina now, and it's it's really exciting. And I uh, I've told many people this. I go to sleep thinking about SSI, and I wake up thinking about SSI and all of the events. Um, so I would say that it is a balance. Um, it is, it's a balance to be a president. It's a balance to have all these meetings, going and doing tabling events, and then trying to keep up with your schoolwork, um, and then also working, like it, it's a sacrifice. So that's what I would say. It's a sacrifice to, to have this position and to be involved, but it is so worth it. And another thing is that the support um, that I can speak on for Students Supporting Israel is incredible. Um, it's, it's, they have your back. Like Elon, you'll text him and he'll text you like within 10 minutes. It's just incredible how there are hundreds of students and you have that support. And so I would say, yes, it's a sacrifice, but it is well worth it. And, um, you know, we're all here fighting for the cause. And I think that's beautiful and, um, we'll, we'll leave a legacy on your campus. So I would say, I would say go for it, even though it's hard. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think that there is um, there's definitely uh, a sacrifice that is made like in putting yourself out there and being willing to have these conversations, um, particularly, you know, by willing by being willing to have these conversations, you open yourself up to, frankly, like criticism, criticism from any given side and open uh, open anti-Semitism and, and and accusations and when what have you. But I also think that it's, it's so rewarding to like be able to just like sit down with people and just like have 
these conversations that are so, so, so important. Uh, and I love just uh, like even in the casual, casual atmosphere, just like sitting down with like my friends and when we're all hanging out and just like talking about the issues and like thinking about like how we feel about Israel and how we can communicate that to other people and, and how like different people experience these issues differently and just having discussions about all that stuff. And so, you know, this is something that like exists in a sort of semi-professional aspect, like through the groups that we all uh, inhabit and, and practice these values through and, uh, but also like through our own personal experiences like, for example, I'm an AEPI, it's the Jewish fraternity on campus, and I just, like, really value, like, just being able to sit down with my brothers at any given time and just, like, have these have these conversations um, and and talk about uh, the issues and, and how we all feel. Uh, and so it, 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 it definitely, there is, this, I think, a certain sacrifice, but also, uh, I think, a great, great reward in it being able to have these conversations. Come to end this, it was wonderful. Students are amazing. And uh, I hope that it gave great insight to high school students, as well as to all the people who are watching who are not high school students. And um, been really incredible uh, questions. I I just want to mention that a lot of the student questions came from uh, Rambam uh, uh, Masivta, Uh, high school, which is a really phenomenal high school in uh, Long Island. So thank you very much uh, to them. So we appreciate it, Bill, for your great moderation here. And to all of the students, we thank you very much for your insights. And everybody that's out there, please sign up for the next webinar, which is next Sunday. It's absolutely phenomenal and uh, should not be missed. And hopefully we'll have all of our technical difficulties uh, complete by then. But in the meantime, thank you very much from the Israel Group and the Gary Shapiro Israel Speaker Series. Thank you.